and welcome to Half Hour With. I'm your host, Yandra LaBeouf, a freelance reporter for Black Girl Nerds and Rolling Out. And I have the honor of being joined by Michelle Tremble Spellman, who is the creator and showrunner for Truth Be Told, and Ron Cephas Jones, who plays Tree Goldville on the show. We are going to have a marvelous conversation about the show, and we appreciate you tuning in. So I thank you, Michelle and Rob, for joining me today. And Michelle, before our guests today who are new to the show may have not have had, a, had the opportunity to see it, could you give us a brief overview of the show? Well, Truth Be Told is about uh, Poppy Parnell, played by Octav- Octavia Spencer. She plays a podcaster in the San Francisco Bay Area, specifically Marin and Oakland, who takes over and investigates a different case every season. So season one, it was a mystery uh around surrounding Aaron Paul and Lizzie Kaplan and season two the mystery is around Kate Hudson and so we just started filming season three but it is a family drama crime series awesome why don't we take a look before we start a discussion today why don't we take a look at the trailer for this season season two you have to help me find out what happened to my husband seeking answers is never a straight line Police are closing the case. His widow deserves answers. You saw the same thing I did. You just don't want to face it. Micah, I'm going to do the podcast, force the police to look deeper into the case. I won't only find out what you want me to know. Air it all. This season, we will present the information ignored by the media and the police. So we know what our friends want us to know about their marriages. It's like a lion to me. I'm worried about Poppy. Her marriage? She's coming loose at the seams. Do you trust her? If you don't work with Poppy, she'll work against you. She lies. Tried to gaslight me. How does that make you feel? Like burning it down. You thought that you could control me. I don't know what you're talking about. You have to be honest with me. Why did you even want me involved with this case? My name is Poppy Parnell, and I will not give up until I have the truth. Woo! (laughs) It is an exciting season. I had the pleasure of powering through it. Michelle, beginning with you, Poppy played by the amazing Octavia Spencer, as she shifts into a new investigation, it takes more and more from her personal life. What does, what does the podcast provide for her that keeping her connected and pulling her further and further away from her loved ones? Well, I think that that's what we love to explore each season, how whatever she's investigating puts pressure on her, her family and the people that she loves, and then how that ends up uh, influencing the case. So we try to just build this loop of pressure, the pressure of the case on the family and then the family on the case. And we were able to do that season one and season two in order to build to a um, a uh, a case for season three that is about the family. It is, it's been compelling to watch how the cases have become interwoven in her life, particularly this season when it's someone she knows personally compared to the first. Mm-hmm. Ron, for, for you, Shreve is such a formidable man, businessman. He's had a long history in the Bay Area being head of the biker gang. What, when he looks at his daughter and her pursuit of, of, of attention, of fulfillment, what do you think that he adds to her career at this stage? In the first season, we saw him coming to grips with some of his own complications out in his own personal life. So what do you think now coming into that awareness of them and building a better relationship with his daughter does this season? Well, season two explored that more. Um, there's a transition right now that uh, Poppy and Shreve are going through from their past, which we start to get in in season two, and we're exploring more in season three. Um, But season two, you finally get an opportunity to see uh, the fraughtness, like a rubber band, um, 
and this tension between them is starting to uh, subside and more of the love is coming out and you start to see Poppy make a transition from being a, a Parnell into a Scoville. And she's embracing her past through her father and we're starting to explore that, that intense love relationship between father and daughter. And uh, like Nichelle was saying, now we're starting to see more about her personal life, the family drama that comes with the pressure that she has of being a podcaster and now solving murder, uh, mysteries in that area. So she's coming home and now you see more of the relationship between uh, Shreve and, and Poppy. With, with that coming home, we've seen Shreve kind of express himself in different ways and we've been getting more insights into his history. Has that relationship, repairing that relationship with his daughter made him more comfortable sharing those aspects of his past life that he wasn't comfortable sharing before? Well, I don't know if I would say comfortable. He's trying to get comfortable. I mean, that's what the whole mystery of, of it is. Um, trying to talk about his feelings with her, her trying to share with Shreve. Also, there's a big community involved where Shreve is like a community leader as well. So Poppy is starting to trust him more with information and she starts to come to, to Shreve to get support where she knows that it's gonna be solid. I think that Shreve is more involved in her life now in regards to what she does and how he can step in and help her with these different issues, with his knowledge of the community and the streets and uh, even into some of the politics of how things work. So uh, he becomes a, a, a great advisor for Poppy in that way. And we start to see that uh, in season two, how he's supportive of her and she embraces uh, her father's love. Michelle, as that relationship, that tension starts to dissipate between the two of them, um, we see that the tightrope between her, there's a tightrope between her and Ingram. And as she gets closer to her family, she gets further apart from her marriage. Is that, do you think that is more satisfying in her life to have that re- kindling that connection with her, her immediate family that she's been lacking since childhood and making her better in her podcast ability. Maybe the, the marriage wasn't the best option for her. Well, you know, I think that there's a cynical part of Poppy that it feels like anything that's good is going to come at a cost. So it's not easy for her to have both in her mind. That's part of the trauma of her past. So she feels like, okay, if it, if she has her father, it, is the universe really going to let her also have her marriage? And there just feels like she's always sort of fighting this idea that anything good means something bad is coming up. So that's a little of the tension that plays underneath for her too. And you see it between these two men who are the most important ones in her life. Ron, over to you, these two men that are important to her life, what do you think? They're very different men, but there is this, this copy is their common bond. What do you think are the aspects they have in common that draws her to both of them? She has her fatherly love, of course, but there are some commonalities that keeps her very tethered to the both of them. I think it's common that we all negotiate what love is, you know, whether it be from your family or from your relationships. And Poppy's caught in the middle of all that. I mean, um, she has this wonderful marriage that's kind of fallen apart because she's being separated from her husband by the love she has and the attention she puts into what she does. And then you have her coming back home and now having to deal with her family and her relationship with her father. Um, she's trying to negotiate what, in my mind and what I'm feeling from Shreve's point of view is her coming home gives him an opportunity to reconnect with, with his daughter, but it also pulls her away from her marriage in a way. Um, there's a tension between her husband and myself um, that's just just very tight and fraught because, you know, he, he we come from two different sides of the tracks, so to speak, you know, so Poppy's trying to negotiate that between the two. So I think for me, she's she's trying to find how to negotiate love. And like Nichelle said, what, what do you trust and how intensely do you trust it? Uh, how can you let go and still do what you love to do? Your passion, her passion for being inquisitive and, you know, this podcast that becomes somewhat dangerous in season two because she's dealing with 
a lot of different, um, uh, like a murder, you know, and, and people that are close to her. So, um, and then there's this relationship she has with Marcus, with uh, uh, Mackay Pfeiffer's role. So that's a third uh, man that's in her life that she has history with. So there's sort of a triangle that kind of is, is going on and Poppy's in the middle of it, trying to negotiate between fatherhood, friendship and husband. Uh, and it gets very fraught. That's where everybody gets involved in that. It has kind of pulling her in different ways, you know, and um, it's, it's really intense. It, and it, I think it, it, one, of, one of the aspects there too is that her personal history always influences whatever she's doing. So it can't, it's just not straight ahead clean, which is what she experienced when she was a reporter at the New York Times. And now that she has the freedom to sort of build the career that she wants that fuses the personal and the professional, she's using her history to investigate, to inform, to understand other people. And that's how we see it played out with the Kate Hudson character, who is another person in her life, who's the holder of her secrets. And that's the back and forth between the two women that also adds the tension in season two. What's fascinating to me is she ha you have this established career woman terrific pedigree, New York Times, and now she's ventured into doing uh, a crime podcast in that it's not so isolating in that she does have these strong male figures in her life who are supportive. So she doesn't have to do the, I'm a strong woman. I have to do it all by myself. The tension actually comes with, with the Kate character, as, as you mentioned. Why was it important for that to be central to the story that in the midst of being successful and able to accomplish things, it wasn't from a place where she needed to be the strong woman who doesn't need anyone else to help her. She may, kind of maintained that tightrope very, very, very well. You know, it was important to Octavia and I to make Poppy as full bodied as possible. And that include um, showing her vulnerability, showing that she's actually kind of a, a prickly character. Um, and Octavia, with her sweet face, you always expect, you know, just, you know, light and kindness and softness. And she's a little edgy and she's a little short tempered and she doesn't have patience with people. And so we just wanted to um, color in all the lines that we could. And what's been fun in the writing and the acting for both of us is discovering these new corners of Poppy that that add to the puzzle, that get in her way or help her. And so I think that her vulnerability and her willingness just to um, to be a little prickly and give in to the not so nice aspects of her personality makes it fun for Octavia to play and frankly, fun for me to write. It's fantastic. You have a, a, a marvelous cast. Ron, of course, Mackay Pfeiffer is phenomenal. Andre Royal joins this season. It's a tremendous cast. Ron, when you look at all these talented artisans that surround you, what is the, the energy when you get ready to shoot? There's a, a wonderful scene with Andre when he first comes on to be provide lawyer, lawyering assistance for her. She's negotiating this trial. What were those days like for you, those scenes to shoot with him? Well, I've, I'll start out with Octavia, of course. Um, Every actor that works like I like to work, when you find someone of that caliber that works similarly, um, we're very script oriented, very specific in regards to what we're doing and why we're doing. That was very, very exciting for me to be able to work with her. Um, we have very similar ways that we want to work, very spe specific. And it's, it's fun. It's work. It really is a lot of work. You're going into the script, you're figuring out all these little beautiful layers and Makai brings that same type of energy. And um, so as each cast and each scene, we start to form this way where we're all, we work similarly. And that's very exciting for an actor. It doesn't happen often where you can bond through the work, um, right in the work and, and uh, 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 everyone, Tracy Toms, Hanifa Brown, um, uh, all, all the family stuff that I work with mostly, uh, you start to really feel like in the scene that these really are my daughters, you know, and I have a daughter. So I have so much to pull on in regards to that that's already in my heart and in my gut. So um, you have this amazing writing, writing that has layers, writing that means something other than just, you know, a lighthearted story, but, you know, you feel so much 
and uh, everything starts with the words uh, as far as as far as I'm concerned and I know um, Octavia and most of the cast we really get into the script work and and uh, so then we can let go and let these characters really live these characters definitely live as a matter of fact why don't we take a second look at a second clip featuring you and the amazing Octavia Spencer. I'm scared. I know, Daddy. We have to tell Lillian and the girls. You need the support, and we all need to be able to help you. No. Daddy. I said no. How do you think you're going to be able to keep it from them? Especially Lillian. The second I tell her, I'll become an old man to her. I'm not ready for her to look at me like I'm losing my mind. No, oh, Daddy. I have a beautiful young wife. I am not going to be ridiculous to her. What does that mean? It means what it means. My terms. I don't even want to hear it. We're Catholic. And I'm a criminal. A man can be a contradiction. I love writing scenes for Octavia and Ron together. It is my absolute favorite. It's just so wonderful. It's, it's, it's just astonishing as a writer to put something on the page. And then it's exactly what you meant when the two of them are together. It's just, it's just a gift. It's so beautiful. It's magical and it's touching. And I'm just in awe of, in the midst of the basis of it being a, a true crime podcast, there are these other circumstances that are shaping this relationship with the, with uh, Ron and Octavia's characters in particular. They're exploring family trauma, past bonds. Uh, Ron's character is suffering from CTE and what happens when our elders start needing more care and more attention. The, inter the process of interweaving those topics in with the main storyline, what was important to you to prioritize over other topics in the show? Well, you know, it was really important to me to have a family drama playing as like the base note for this crime series, because I wanted to delve into and explore the fact that we've we, we, we become consumers of true crime as if these people aren't real, that you watch something and it's traumatic. And you could be working with someone whose family member is featured on a show and you don't know what that feels like. So I wanted to explore that side of it and then what the toll is for the people who are in, investigating it. And in order to, to create that balance, one thing that I told the writers when she's with the family, she's not talking about the case. So even if you talk about your job for five minutes, you're not talking about your job for the entire time you're visiting with your father or your sisters or whatever else. So we always had to find a way to service the main plot, but give just as much time and energy to what was going on with these characters that were influencing the way that they see the mystery or investigate the mystery. So it was an important balance for me. And that's exactly what we set out to do. And with that, with her occupation influencing the rest of her life, it put them in jeopardy in, in season one. There's always a threat of jeopardy as each season goes and each story takes place. Ron, for, for you, Ron has the position, he's the patriarch of the family. And it's very important that people not only respect him, but seek him out in order to apply protection to his daughter, to his family, to his community. If you had to describe what he means to that community and that family, how would you describe him? African-Americans have a history of community, family, each one teach one. And Shreve is a throwback of that, you know, in the Bay Area. I mean, I, Nichelle gave me a couple of books to read early on, uh, did some research about the motorcycle gangs, but they were really clubs um, and also, the, there's a history with the Black Panthers who started out not as a criminal organization, but a community organization to feed children, to teach them how to read, um, to give them some history of themselves, um, whatever they could do to help the community. And that's what this motorcycle club is representative of and Shreve is. Yes, he 
there's some criminal elements that the writers are weaving in, but there's subtle criminal elements that are related to what he originally does. So sometimes when we want to police ourselves or do things for ourselves, you know, uh, we're, we're penned as criminals or uh, rebels, you know, when in fact we're, we're, we're trying to help serve our community. So um, that's where the history of the motorcycle club comes from in, in Shreve as well. You know, they build these beautiful bicycles. They're craftsmen, they're artists. So those are some of the elements that I want to, I uh, constantly want to bring uh, to his character, as well as being a devoted family man and a devoted uh, love of his wife and of now his other wife. So um, he's a complex man. And also there's history of uh, 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 African-American men who have never had an opportunity to therapeutically deal with their rage. So there's a there's an underlying rage to Shreve that that we get to surface and try to understand that, you know, we have a history with this rage of being sort of downtrodden and put to the side and, you know, a history of looking down and not being able to hold our heads up and, you know, without having to talk about it and deal with it, we, we carry this rage. So that's another level. Uh, we love intensely and we have this intense rage as well. So um, it's just beautiful for me to have the writers write sort of those little layers in where you can put those, those things in and it makes him so complex, which is very much indicative of our history and our communities um, because we've lost a lot of that. Just even, even now when we're talking about, you know, gun control and how guns and drugs have been flooded into our communities um, and how we've had to deal with that. And some fall by the wayside and some continue to fight um, to bring back family and community. And so that gets deeper and deeper as we go into it. I, I can't uh, tell you enough about the season that's coming up, man. It just gets better and better and better. And um, I'm really, really excited about that. Absolutely. Michelle, I, I, I particularly enjoyed that as well, that the fact that he is part of a motorcycle gang and that's something that you don't often see attached to African-Americans. I know they're out there. They come roaring up my street at any <laughs> given time here. I live in Inglewood and there's a number of African-American motorcycle gangs that are, are groups or clubs, social clubs, not gangs, social clubs that are, are in this area. What was your particular attachment in wanting that to be the central piece? Because there's often other tropes that are associated with the Bay and the basis of from where people come from. Why that in particular? Well, you know, be, what the book itself, Are You Sleeping, that the show is based on was set in Illinois and I moved it to the San Francisco Bay Area so I could pull from my own history and fill out the characters in a way that I understood. And the uh, motorcycle clubs, the black motorcycle clubs in particular from my childhood are just part of the fabric of the community to me. Just the way, you know, I'd go to school and we, I'd see the Panthers or I'd see the East Bay Dragons on their bike. So I just wanted the color and flavor of the Bay Area to be a part of the show. And it was such a wonderful opportunity to build that around Shreve and get some of that, you know, casual history in there without, you know, being on a pulpit and telling people, this is what's important and this is what you should know. We just had, you know, Ron's character walk in, in his, in his leathers. And it was like, oh, okay, here we go. So, and it's fun. It's enjoyable. How many pairs of the leather did you have, Ron? Did you have like seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is like a standard, you know, that he, that he has, you know, they don't get too elaborate, you know what I mean, unless it's on an occasion. But yeah, there's a beautiful yeah. standard and a look that they've created for him that is so comfortable and beautiful, man. I, I'm really enjoying that aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. I love the, that the ladies are also riding the motorcycles. That was super, <laughs> like, oh, let me go. That was pretty awesome. In, in case... Michelle, in case, people, in case someone hasn't had a chance to start watching the show, Truth Be Told, what's the one thing that comes to mind that you think might entice them to start watching or catch up or become ingrained with the family like I have and so many others have? I, the cast. You know, it was an embarrassment of riches, <laughs> the cast that I had to work with um, season one and season two. And then our regular cast of Octavia, Ron, Hanifa, Tracy, Mackay. The baseline is you could come for the mystery and stay for the family. Oh, I love that. 
And the same for you, Ron. Is there any particular moment that you think would be an amazing enticement for people to get involved with the show or catch up if maybe there are a couple episodes behind? Yeah, I, I, I think I would say exactly what Nichelle just said. I think, you know, you come for the mystery, but the family is going to hook you because there's so many elements of that story that um, people are going to be able to relate to and identify with instantly. You know, um, all those beautiful things that relationships that happen with family and also relationships uh, outside of the family as well and how they affect that. So um, it's really it's really about the writing. It's just really good writing. Uh, and that's what old people. Storytelling is all about, <laughs> you know, it goes back to the griot and sitting around the campfire and, you know, how you tell the story keeps people involved and pulls them in and scares them and makes them cry. And so it's really about good storytelling. That's what I would say would, would, would grab you. Absolutely. So many people enjoy true crime podcasts and don't realize these real stories can put you in real jeopardy if you're con conducting investigations. And Octavia has been executing that masterfully. And I find myself leaning in because I don't want to miss a single thing that's happening with this whole family. It's been amazing. And salute to the great Michael Beach and Tammy Roman, who are also marvelous, marvelous on the show. Well, unfortunately, it went by so fast. I could talk about this show for a long time because it's awesome. So that includes that concludes today's panel. And I'd like to thank our friends at Apple TV Plus and to Michelle and to Ron for joining us today. And for everyone watching, thank you for joining us. And thank you for watching Half Hour With. I'm Giandra LaBeouf from Black Girl Nerds, and we appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, Giandra. Thank you. Thank you.